Greetings! Now, uh, this week Steve Coogan was interviewed and he gave his opinion on Keir Starmer. Now, uh, Steve Coogan someone I, I really admire. I love all of his comedy work. I love Alan Partridge, all that stuff. Fantastic. But he's never shied away from giving his political opinion as well. Uh, if you haven't heard the clip, I'm going to put it in now and uh, I'll talk about it afterwards. Talking of democracy, will you feature prominently in next year's elections? Would you campaign on behalf of a party? I've got a big problem with Keir Starmer. I think the best thing I can do is keep my mouth shut. Right. Uh, I think he, in the, I think in the morning, he licks his finger, sticks it up in the air, sees which way the wind is blowing, and that for that's a cheap. So are you uh, politically homeless? Does that make you? Yeah, I am a bit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I remember when Gary Lineker um, did that tweet about... Uh, uh, you know, refugees and 1930s oh, Germany, yeah, yeah, and got and everyone jumped on him. And uh, Keir Starmer wheeled out Emily Thornberry to um, quietly admonish uh, Gary for his uh, unwise choice of words. And then uh, Keir Starmer, of course, hiding in the background, waiting to see where the wind blows. And the next day, uh, a tsunami of public support for Gary's sentiments um, emerged. And guess what? Keir Starmer was right behind Gary. What a surprise. Does well, that sadden you? Yeah, it does, yeah. I, I think that, uh, yeah, it's kind of, you know, I see something coming like American politics. You know, you can have a choice between a right-wing government that reinforces the establishment and protects vested interests, or you can have a government that does that but slightly less and, and with a slightly different emphasis. You see, I think... Keir Starmer is a very good political operator. I'll give him that, but it's at the expense of grown-up conversation. He's he's so risk averse that he will say or do whatever reinforces his chance of being elected. You might go, well, that's really good. That's really politically adept, but he stops real conversation. So yeah, wherever you sit on the fence on Keir Starmer, and I know my viewers, uh, my subscribers are very 50-50 on this. When I look at the comment section, you're either very pro Keir Starmer or very anti Keir Starmer. <laughs> wherever you sit on the conversation, I don't think you can disagree with what Steve Coogan's saying here. Uh, whenever Starmer is asked a question on a subject, he will always answer in whatever he thinks that the voters that he needs to win want to hear. That's how he operates. That's how he's always operated. Um, again, whether you love him or hate him, Jeremy Corbyn, at least with Corbyn, you knew that when he was asked a question, he will always give his honest answer. Now, that honest answer upset a few people, but it was always honest. And you knew, you knew it was his opinions that he was giving. And this is, this is the question that we need to ask, is what's the best way to win an election? Again, Jeremy Corbyn lost two elections. He fought two elections and lost them. Now, you can argue in the comments section exactly why, whether it was infighting in the Labour Party or accusations of anti-Semitism. You can have that argument. But at the end of the day, by being an honest politician, he lost two elections. Uh, is it just the case that in a first-past-the-post system like we have here, Honesty is not the best policy. Now, Coogan makes the comparisons with America. I don't think, oh, hello. Yeah, all right, love. I, lo I love it when cars pull out in front of you and then wave to say thanks. I didn't really have a choice in that situation. But, you know. <laughs> but yeah, he makes the comparison with America. It's no coincidence we both share this ridiculously stupid first-past-the-post voting system uh, where you have a two-party system and you have the choice between economically right or slightly less economically right. <laughs> You know, it does first past the post, just breed this. Is this the only choice that we have? Um, and is it a legitimate way? Is it the only way for a Labour Party to win an election by just appealing to the voters that they need? Uh, this is the big question about Keir Starmer, isn't it? Because only Keir Starmer knows what he truly believes and what he truly wants to do if he becomes Prime Minister. I just have to hope that he will stick to his 10 pledges that he's already scrapped when he actually comes into Parliament and he will go back to his more socialist policies when Jeremy Corbyn was leader and he was working under him. I just have to hope that's going to happen, but I don't, I don't know. Um, but it's just everything comes back to changing the voting system in this country. All of our problems stem back to the, the voting system in this country. And 
I might surprise a few people here, but I think the most democratic government that you could have in this country would be kind of like a, a centrist Labour Party backed up with a Green Party pushing for social policies, pushing for environmental policies, and a Reform Party that are basically just there going, you know, don't take the piss on immigration, don't go crazy on the woke stuff. I think that would probably be the most democratic government that this country could have. And you can't incumbent that into a first-past-the-post system. A Labour, a, a Labour Party or a Conservative Party could not incumbent that group, those ideas. And uh, yeah. what's your thoughts, guys? It always comes back to the fucking voting system, doesn't it? If you enjoyed the video, plonk a like. If you haven't subscribed, you can subscribe up there. And uh, give me your comments, of course. I want to hear. And there's probably another video. You can check that out as well. Till next time, take care.